Rioters in Ukraine's capital of Kiev are reportedly holding two policemen hostage. Authorities also say an officer was found shot dead in the city center with another in hospital with stab wounds. Amid burning the barricades, the protesters and riot police showered the streets with Molotov cocktails and rubber bullets overnight. The fury in Kiev is spreading to Ukraine's west as well, as RT's Alexei Yaroshevsky reports. These are the scenes playing out across western Ukraine. One by one, 13 regions so far have been overcome by protest rage. Rioters have stormed regional administration buildings. It turned violent in some cases as angry crowds clashed with the police. And all that occurring to the west of the Dnieper River, which breaks the country in two. But on the other side, there's hardly any disturbance at all. If we're talking about people from southern and eastern parts, they are not eager to participate in any sort of uh, military action. In the southern region of the Crimea, authorities have had enough of the nationwide uprising. They are ready to defend peace and order, although they seem confident they won't have to. This wave would never reach us, but if it does, our party is ready to provide help to law enforcers. We would set up roadblocks and not let anyone get inside Crimea. Our party alone is capable of mobilizing up to 5,000 people. We're not talking about seceding from Ukraine yet. We're talking about restoring constitutional order, but we would never accept any orders from illegitimate bodies of power created at the Maidan. For a better understanding of what is exactly happening in Ukraine in terms of its territory, we have this map over here. The parts of the country marked in yellow are the ones where the local administrations have already been overthrown. The red ones are the contested territories. The pink ones are where riots and mass uprisings are still taking place, and the blue ones where nothing is happening at all. There's no revolt, no uprising at all. And you can see for yourself, this is pretty much a 50-50 division. Such strong antagonism between the two sides of the country have created concerns which had previously seemed unthinkable, that Ukraine may follow Yugoslavia's scenario and break apart. All law enforcement uh, detachments have been moved uh, to Kiev. Police control all the situation in western regions in Ukraine is very weak these days. Any sort of uh, split scenario which uh, could happen within uh, next weeks, uh, this must be described as quite possible because government wouldn't have enough forces. Ukraine will be split probably in two parts uh, with uh, two different countries. On Thursday, the opposition declared a truce with the government for 72 hours. But with rioters in Kiev again burning tires and hurling burning projectiles at the police, hardly anyone in Ukraine feels that the crowds are listening to anyone right now. Alexei Roshevsky, RT, reporting from Kiev in Ukraine. Meanwhile, President Yanukovych has agreed to several concessions, reshuffling his cabinet and pledging to review recent laws that introduced harsher punishments for rioters. However, opposition leaders have called for citizens across Ukraine to form militias and take control into their own hands. Artis Paulus Slayer traveled east of the capital to see if those calls were being heard there. Here in eastern Ukraine, there's a lot of support for the president. Many do not support violence. Many do not support revolution. There have been a number of rallies held in support of the government, and we've been talking to people who do not want to see a change in power. I stand for Yanukovych. The only thing I wish is that he would have declared a state of emergency in the country. But he didn't because he's such a gentle-hearted person. We're here to support our president, Viktor Yanukovych, to support the constitutional order. We want to see the calls for coup d'etat to stop, as well as the violence to end. People on Maidan should not be lied to anymore. If we want to live in a European country, well, let's behave in a civilized manner. And that's the opposite from what is happening right now. This is anarchy and this is wrong. The Western media has been depicting the story as if the whole of Ukraine is against the government. But this is simply untrue. You have at least half the country here in eastern Ukraine where people support the president. And they've been gathering themselves in almost vigilante type groups to protect the government in the case of violence. For now, though, they have been holding pro-government rallies, and these will continue throughout the day here at places like October Square. Rallies have been held in the past against association with the European Union. Paulus Lea RT, Donetsk, Ukraine.